Hey guys, Will Mahan here with Saberoon Design Tutorial Blog, and in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make Captain America's shield. Now a couple of things of note before we get started. Some of the techniques I'm using in this tutorial are covered in great detail in previous tutorials. I've left links to those in the captions, and if you haven't looked at them yet, go ahead and take a minute to do it. It'll make this tutorial much easier. Also, there are some filters and plugins that I use in this tutorial that do not come installed with Photoshop by default. You'll have to download and install those manually. I've left links in the captions for those as well. And one last thing, we have officially moved from CS5 to CS6. Now this particular tutorial can be fully replicated in CS5, however, the workflow will be different in certain areas. If you get hung up on a step, Leave your question in the comment section and I'll do my best to explain the difference between the CS5 and the CS6 process. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Go to File, hit New, set your size to 1000 by 1000 and click OK. Go to Edit, Preferences, Guides, Grid and Slices, change your grid lines to every 100 pixels, add subdivisions to 1 and click OK. Reset your background and foreground swatches to their defaults by clicking here or by hitting the D key. And go ahead and hit control and apostrophe to bring up the visibility of your grid. Now, the first thing we need to do is to create the pattern that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. And we're going to do that with vector shapes. So go down to your shape tool, choose the ellipse tool, and click anywhere on the canvas and then the box that pops up change your width to 1000 change your height to 1000 and check the from center box and hit OK I'll change your fill color to 20 percent gray click your path selection tool duplicate this layer by holding down alt and dragging up right click and choose free transform and scale this down so that it takes up one less grid segment than it previously did. Click the check to commit that change and change your fill color to 30% gray. Duplicate this layer by holding down Alt and dragging straight up. Right click, choose Free Transform. Click on the corner and drag in holding Shift and Alt as you do and scale that down until it takes up one less grid segment than it previously did. Hit the checkbox to commit to change. And change the fill color of this circle to 40% gray. Now duplicate this layer, hold down Alt, click and drag straight up, right click, free transform path, grab the corner and drag in, holding down Shift and Alt as you do until it takes up one less grid segment than it previously did. Hit the check to commit that change and change the fill color of this circle to 50%. Now go back down to your shape tool, choose the polygon tool, set your sides to 5, go into the configuration panel and check the box next to star. Starting in the center, click and drag straight up, holding shift as you do, and snap it to this grid line. Change the fill color of the star to 60% gray. Now as I said before, this is our pattern and we don't want to work destructively with these layers but we still need them for other steps in the tutorial. So what we're going to do is hold down Control Shift and Alt and hit E one two times to copy all the visible layers. I'll go ahead and hit Control Apostrophe to turn off your grid. We're done with that for now. And turn the visibility to these two layers off for now. Now double click on the Ellipse 1 Copy 3 layer to bring up the Layer Styles panel. Click on Inner Glow change the color to black, click OK, change the blend mode to multiply, and change the size to 8, and click OK. While holding down the Alt key, hover over the FX icon on the Copy 3 layer, click and drag it down and drop it on top of the Copy 2 layer, and repeat that again for the Ellipse 1 Copy layer. And what we've done is just add a little bit of a drop shadow effect that will enhance the overall effect of the image. Now click on the Polygon 1 layer to activate it. Holding down the Shift key, click on the Ellipse 1 layer, right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now click and activate the Layer 2 layer. Turn its visibility to On. Now click Filter, NVIDIA Tools, Normal Map Filter. And then the panel that appears in your height source, check Average RGB. In your Alpha Field, check Unchanged. 
check add height to normal map, check 9 by 9 and set your scale to 10 and click OK. Now we want to enhance this a little bit so let's do that by duplicating it. Hold down the Alt key, click and drag straight up and drop. Change the blending mode to that copy to overlay. And you'll notice it makes it pop just a little bit more. So go ahead and hit Control E to merge down. Now go to File, Save, choose JPEG as the file type, and name it Normal Map and hit Save. Now turn the visibility to that layer off for now and drag it down to the bottom of the stack click and activate layer 1 and turn its visibility to on. Now go to the 3D menu. Now this is where the workflow between CS5 and CS6 takes a pretty dramatic shift. In CS5 you're going to be doing the next few steps inside the repousse panel and whereas CS6 the repousse doesn't even exist anymore. If you get hung up on a step simply ask your question in the comment section and I will do my best to explain the difference between the CS5 and the CS6 process. Now for now go ahead and hit new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Now here's one important thing to take note of if you're new to working in 3D and CS6. Make sure that your 3D panel and your properties panel are visible at all times. You will greatly improve the speed and ease of your projects if you perform that one simple step. Go ahead and click layer 1. Go down to the properties panel and click the deform button and change your extrusion depth to 1. Now click the cap button, go down to the strength field and change that to 5%. Now go up to the layer 1 front inflation material. If you're using CS5 you can find that underneath the filter by materials button. Go to the material preview. Click the flyout menu and choose metal. Click OK. Click yes or no there depending on your preference. And go down and choose metal steel brushed. And you'll notice that that wipes our pattern right out but that's OK. We're going to be replacing it soon enough. But for now Let's do a couple other things first. Our brush metal pattern is exactly what we want, but it is way too strong. So let's go down to the bump field and change that to 2% and hit enter. I go down to the normal map icon, click the folder and choose load texture and find the file that we created earlier and click it. And look what happens. Suddenly, our image has taken on a whole new life. Pretty cool, huh? Now it's time to add a little color to this, so reactivate the layer 1 front inflation material. Go to the diffuse section and click the icon and choose edit texture. Now notice it opened a separate document. The materials work in a similar fashion to smart objects. They're all contained within their own documents and the original document simply references them during render time. Go up to image and choose image size and set this to 1000 by 1000 which is the same size as our pattern document was and click OK. Now without closing this image go back to the original document click on the polygon 1 layer to activate it and grab your move tool click and drag that layer onto the material document and while holding shift drop it in the center. Now what shift does is forces the new layer to be placed in the exact same position that it was in on the old layer. So if the two documents are the same size then when you drop it onto the new document it will assume the same position and as you can see it's perfectly centered. Now double click on the smart object to bring up the smart object document and we're going to add a little color to this. So grab your path selection tool click on the polygon 1 layer and change the fill to white. Click on ellipse 1 copy 3 change its fill to blue. Click on ellipse 1 copy 2 change its fill to red. Click on ellipse 1 copy change its fill to white and click on ellipse 1 and change its fill to red. Now go ahead and close the smart object document choosing yes when prompted to save. Now go up to blending mode and change that to linear burn and now go ahead and close choosing yes when prompted to save. 
And here's what we've got so far. And that's going to do it for the artistic assets of the shield itself. And now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and resize the canvas. So go to Image, Canvas Size, and set your width to 1350. Now, if you've downloaded the foreground and background images that I made available, go ahead and add those now. Okay, drag the foreground image on top of the 3D layer and leave the background image below it. On the foreground image, change its blending mode to screen. And let's go ahead and turn its visibility off for now. Now click and activate the 3D layer and let's reposition this shield just a little bit. Click on the current view layer, grab the camera rotate tool, rotate it around to about like so, click the camera zoom tool, bring it in about like so, and grab the camera pan tool and bring it down to about yeah, right there doesn't look too bad. Let's rotate it back just a little more. There we go. I think I can live with that. Now, click on the Layer 1 Front Inflation Material layer. Go down to the Reflection Field and change that to 25%. And go to the Shine Field and change that to 80%. Now click on the Filter by Lights button and reposition your Infinite Light to yeah, something about like that looks good. Now go back to the Scene tab and click on the Environment tab and it's time to load our image-based light. Now if you're using CS5, the image-based light is installed under the Filter by Lights tab. I go ahead and click on the IBL field and choose Load Texture and from the image-based light presets that we downloaded earlier, choose the Creative IBL6 Light Rig A. Now we'll want to reposition this. It, it's not the most intuitive tool in the tool set. You'll have to fight with it for a minute to get it exactly where you want it, but just keep going and eventually it'll drop in where we want it to be. And I think about you know, that doesn't look too bad right there. Let's try that and see what happens. Now let's give this a quick render just to see where we're at by clicking this little icon here at the bottom of the properties panel. Now if you're using CS5, you'll do a render by changing your edit mode from interactive to ray trace draft. And as you can see, when it first starts off, it's pretty dirty, but with every pass that the render engine makes, this will just keep getting cleaner and cleaner. And I think that's going to work right there. So let's just go ahead and cancel the render by clicking on the edge of the canvas. Now go ahead and turn on the visibility to your foreground layer and click the Create New Layer icon. And we want to change our foreground to 25% gray hold down the ALT key and hit backspace to fill that layer. Now change this layer's blending mode to color burn. And you'll see what we've done here is we've just added a little more drama to the overall image. And that's pretty much it. All that's really left to do at this point is to complete the final render. So go ahead and activate your 3D layer and click the render button and sit back and wait. Now render times can vary. They are influenced by both the complexity of the image and the power of your computing machine. This could take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. If you're using CS6, there's a time estimation field down here at the lower left hand corner. But once you're finished with your final render, you should end up with something that looks about like this. And that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.